some polenta. We're going to use this bowl that comes with one of the sun cookers that we're using. But if you don't have that, you can, that's okay, you can use just any dark cookware because remember the idea is just to absorb as much heat as possible. And cooking polenta is very easy. Um, we're just going to mix all the ingredients together and that's it. And the ingredients are one and a half cups of cornmeal. Just dump that all in. A half a teaspoon of salt. Three and a half cups of water. And finally, one tablespoon of olive oil. And then we'll just mix that all together. And now we're ready to put it in the sun cooker. As you can see, it's pretty windy today. It's about 60 degrees and the weather is a little overcast. And I would normally think that you couldn't cook anything in this kind of weather, but wait and see. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up the panels for the panel cooker. And you just unfold it. Unfold the reflective panels like this. And we're going to look for the sun, which is right about here, and point it towards the sun. That looks like a good spot. Here's the polenta that we prepared earlier in this specially designed bowl for this panel cooker. We put a clear cover over it and put it into the glass bowl. Next we're going to take this and place it into our panel in the middle, just like that. And that's how simple it is. One of the dishes we're going to make today is a ratatouille, which is a traditional French stew. What we're going to be preparing is a little modified from the traditional recipe. Uh, it's actually very similar to the way it's prepared in the movie ratatouille, but minus the rats. Now one of the reasons why ratatouille is such a nice choice for solar cooking is that it uses ingredients that are available at your local farmer's markets during the summer at a time when the sun's rays are at their most intense. Here are the major ingredients in the ratatouille that we will be preparing. Here's a red bell pepper, some summer squash, a zucchini. We have an eggplant. And you can use any type of eggplant that you like and experiment with different kinds. There are Japanese and Chinese eggplants available. We've got some potatoes. And here this is uh, the roasted bell pepper. Here we have some fresh thyme. And here we have the eggplant peeled and sliced with some salt on it to draw out some of the water prior to cooking. So for the ratatouille, earlier we made the sauce. Uh, basically we sauteed some onions, garlic, and that roasted red pepper. Uh, we added some tomato sauce, sauteed that a little longer for the flavors to mellow out. And then we thinned it out with some water and red wine, cooked that for a little longer, then threw that all into the food processor. And you get this really beautiful puree about the consistency of really thick tomato sauce. We poured about an inch thick of the sauce in our black baking dish that will absorb a lot of heat. And then comes the fun part, which is assembling the remaining ingredients in this spiral, beautiful spiral pattern. We're alternating slices of zucchini, potato, squash, and eggplant. And we're going to continue the pattern all the way around the dish and fill in the middle. And you can see why we like this modified recipe. It's really beautiful. When we're done with uh, the rest of the pattern, we'll just sprinkle the top with some salt, some fresh thyme, and then we're going to drizzle the top with some olive oil. 
and then we'll cover it with this clear top and now we're ready to put this into the sun oven. So we're going to put the ratatouille in the box oven that we've been preheating. We can see now that it's about preheated to about 230 degrees. I'll just show you what the ratatouille came out in the end looking like. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to put the clear top on top of the baking dish. Open up this plastic cover to the oven. Oh, I can feel the heat. And place the dish on the rack in the oven. Cover that back up. And let the sun do the work. For the strawberry rhubarb crisp, we're going to start with about four cups of fresh local strawberries that we got from the market, cut into chunks. And equal amounts of rhubarb, also cut into chunks. And we're using our counter compost for all of our kitchen scraps. So we're going to put our strawberries and our rhubarb in a mixing bowl. And we're going to add about two tablespoons of cornstarch as a thickening agent. And to counter the tartness of the rhubarb, we're going to add about two tablespoons of sugar. Here we're using raw turbinado sugar, but you can use whatever sugar you like. And we're adding about a tablespoon of cinnamon, uh, ground cinnamon, um, but you add as much or as little as you like. And then we're going to add a pinch of salt to bring up the flavors. And then we're just going to mix all the ingredients together. And then we're going to put the mixture into this buttered baking dish. level it off. So for the crisp we're going to start with one cup of granola, one cup of rolled oats, and about half a cup of brown sugar. And we're all adding that into the mixing bowl. We're going to add three tablespoons of flour. In this case we're using rice flour but you can use whatever flour you'd like. Then we're going to add a teaspoon of cinnamon or um, cinnamon to taste as you like it and a teaspoon of salt. And then we're going to take some four tablespoons of softened butter. And then I'm just going to mix all the ingredients by hand. I can smell the cinnamon, it smells so good. Okay, that looks about the right consistency. So I'm just going to sprinkle that on top of our fruit. our strawberry rhubarb crisp in this box oven. So we just place it on a block of wood in the oven, cover it up with the plastic cover, and put the reflectors back on. We've also got some sun tea brewing. This is really easy. You just fill a jug up with water, add some tea bags, and let the sun warm it up.